Okay, I got an, uh, an Airy 35 BL3 opened up here, and I have the mid-rib assembly mounted on a jig uh, for the demonstration of this. And what the subject is, it's about um, a mirror belt replacement on the camera. Because um, these cameras utilize uh, three belts, the 35, three, uh, BL3, BL4, uh, BL4S, they utilize uh, three belts. They, um, from the factory, utilize two uh, endless Kevlar belts. Um, one to drive the, the main works of the camera, the, the, the movement, the mirror shutter drive, the um, uh, primary drive for the magazine drive. And then a, a second belt that comes from a mirror drive transmission here that then goes to the back of the mirror and spins the mirror. Well, these cameras are notorious for blowing these mirror belts, and it's happening more and more all the time now because the cameras are getting older and, um, you know, the belts are deteriorating. Now, these mirror drive belts, uh, these stock Kevlar ones are still available through Aerie. They can take a long time to get, and they retail at about 600 bucks, so it's, it's quite a chunk of change. There's a lot of labor involved in switching one of these belts out, but the cost of the belt, we have seen uh, at least two circumstances already uh, by this date in late 2015, where camera owners, uh, be it individuals or colleges, have, have opted out uh, of repairing the camera um, because of a combination of the labor cost to replace as well as the high cost of the replacement belt. So what I wanted to do was try an aftermarket offering. So I, I looked at some specs and, and measured the sprockets on the camera, and I found an aftermarket offering that's actually been out there for a long time by a company by the name of Pick Design. And actually, this particular belt is, is uh, uh, carried by a couple of different distributors, but Pick Design being one of them. So I ordered in a few different lengths. Um, I ordered in a, a 45 tooth, a 46 tooth, a 48 tooth, and a 49. And what I found was both the, the 49 tooth, which is, or the 48 tooth, I'm sorry, the 48 tooth, which is in this package here, and the 49 tooth, which is on the camera right now, were both of sufficient length to allow proper adjustment of tension on the belt. This primary drive sprocket here that, that you are seeing uh, uh, up top with the belt on it is adjustable um, back and forth. It can be adjusted back and forth to obtain a proper tension on the, uh, the belt. And so uh, in this case, this is the 49 tooth belt, and I actually have it a, a little bit further past center toward this sprocket here. So the 48 tooth would certainly be acceptable. I did just an arbitrary adjustment here to get it to where it would be uh, snug enough to where it's not going to jump any teeth or accidentally pop off in a start-stop, but also to where um, it's not so tight that it's going to cause running concerns. Now this is, it is a spliced belt. Uh, have you know, it is a spliced belt. There is a little steel splice. You can just kind of barely see it off my fingertip right there. So this is a spliced belt. It's not an endless uh, loop like the original Kevlar belt. Um, so with this belt, I expect that in a, a sound chamber environment, like you would find at a high end rental house, like a Claremont or Panavision, uh, chances are that, um, there is going to be some sound level difference from the stock original Kevlar belt. Um, but at this point in history with these cameras, I don't know that that is going to be as much of a, uh, detractor as would be the cost of the original belt to replace. So what I've done is I've mounted up one of these little pick design belts and we're gonna run the camera and check a couple of different things. So I'm going to uh, come back once the camera's running. Okay, so now I have the camera running. And we're just running a straight 24 frames per second. I wanna show you a couple of things here. Um, from what I can hear with my ear, and the camera is opened up, so of course it's not going to be as silent as it would be in its blimp housing with everything closed up. But audibly, I cannot hear any ticking from that splice whatsoever. It seems to be running quiet. And by my ear, I am not noticing anything unusual sound level here. 
So I want to go in here and, and see if we can uh, get the camera to find some focus here as the belt's running. Okay, so now we can see that the belt is wandering a little bit, which is really normal with these things because, again, the belt is not tight. It's left a little bit loose, so it can run a little bit quieter, and so it doesn't also pull a lot of uh, current draw on the battery while running. So that really seems to be running quite normal there. And we're going to go up here and, and look at current draw. And, and our current draw is just over 2 amps. And it is fluttering a little bit, but A, that's not very unusual. It's certainly not a high amount of flutter. And B, this is a, a very inexpensive, simple power supply. So it's certainly not as stable as what you would see on a... Um, on a battery of any sort, be it a lead acid or a, or a, a NICAD or, or whatever. So some of that is just due to the uh, stability of this power supply. But that's certainly not an unusual amount of bouncer. It's not showing me anything scary. So again, the camera's running. Seems to be running pretty well. I'm going to uh, pause the video here, and we're going to throw a stroboscope on this mirror and look for mirror bounce. Okay, so I'm strobing the mirror right now with a uh, strobing the mirror right now with a cinematography electronic strobe. So it's a very, very accurate stroboscope for checking camera speeds. And you can see the image of the uh, edge of the uh, the mirror down here as it is frozen by the strobe. And um, there is a, a very little bit of bounce there, a very little bit of dance, but that is certainly nothing unusual for these cameras. You can also see the shutter angle adjust marking up there uh, for a reference. So there's nothing nothing unusual there at all. I mean, the mirror is not running erratic, doesn't have too much bounce. It seems to be doing actually quite well. So um, I can't speak to the longevity of this belt. Uh, it, it may very well not um, meet the, the lifespan of the original belts in these cameras, which was typically at least, you know, five or eight years, and in many instances, many more years in, in use. They lasted a long time. So I can't speak in how long these little aftermarket belts will last. But it, it's certainly a viable option to get the camera back up and going. Uh, and where we are in history, it's probably a uh, certainly an option cost-wise. So anyway, there you have it.